Hello and welcome. So Eba has recently revised the questions and answers related to the nitrosamine impurities into the human medicinal products on 7th July 2023. So as a part of this discussion, we will try to understand the question number 10, which is recently updated in the guideline. That is, which limit applies for nitrosamines in medicinal product? So let us bring the presentation on the board now. And this, this presentation is prepared in the consultation with the answer given under the same question number 10. The first important point that all nitrosamines are described as the cohort of concern under the ICH guideline M7R1. And this guideline talks about the DNA reactive substances. And hence, as it is cohort of concern now, one cannot apply the threshold of toxicological concern limit, which is 1.5 microgram per day for nitrosamines. So the substance specific acceptable intake needs to be calculated for the nitrosamines. Again, the less than lifetime exposure is uh, defined into the ICH M7 R1. And it is mostly applicable for the mutagenic substances. However, the similar approach may not be considered without consultation with the competent authority. And this cannot be applied forever, but it can be only for the temporary measure. So one must understand that the less than lifetime exposure is always better to avoid. For a product intended for advanced cancer, the nitrosamine impurity should be controlled according to the ICH guideline Q3A or Q3B. If the product itself is a carcinogenic, I mean there is no point in controlling the nitrosamines under the acceptable intake which is uh, given under the guideline. Let us now discuss how one can establish the acceptable intake or AI for the given nitrosamines. And there are two possible approaches uh, available. The first one is in case if the substance specific animal carcinogenicity data is available. In that case, you can certainly calculate the TD50 value and then extrapolate to a concentration which results a tumor into one out of one lakh studied species throughout the lifespan. What is meant by TD50? Now this is a concentration which results a tumor into 50% of the studied population. So you understand the TD50 value and then you can extrapolate to 1 in 1 lakh and define the concentration that becomes your acceptable intake. The second possible scenario is the substance specific animal carcinogenicity data is not available. The carcinogenic potency categorization approach or CPCA for nitrosamines should be used to establish the acceptable intake. Now this is the additional information added into this particular Q&A guidance document and we'll talk about the CPC approach in the another video. A negative result in GLP compliant enhanced EMS test or EAT allows control of the nitrosamines at 1.5 micrograms per day. And again, there is a detailed uh, information provided for the EAT in the same Q&A guidance document. For substances testing positive enhanced EMS test or EAT result, the acceptable intake should be established. And the CPC approach can be used as we discussed in the point number one. If a surrogate nitrosamine is available with sufficiently robust carcinogenicity data, the TD50 from the surrogate substance can serve for the derivation of the acceptable intake by SAR and read across approach. And this approach has also been used by the regulators for defining the acceptable intake. A negative result in a relevant well-conducted in vivo mutagenicity study can allow control of the nitrosamine as a non-mutagenic impurity and you can follow the ICH guideline Q3A or Q3B. Okay, let us now talk about how one can decide on to the acceptable intake limits in case if you have a single nitrosamine or more than one nitrosamine in a given product. This is the first point, calculation of the limit when a single known nitrosamine is identified and you can calculate the limit in terms of PPM by using this one calculation formula which is acceptable intake of nitrosamine in nanograms per day 
divided by maximum daily dose in terms of milligram. Calculation of limit when more than one nitrosamine is identified in the same product. And there are two possible approaches. The option number one is the total daily intake of all identified nitrosamines not exceed the acceptable intake of the most potent nitrosamine impurity identified. And here is the example where NDMA and NDEA is, uh, is considered to be the part of the product. And they are about 10% of their acceptable intake. The maximum daily dose of the product is 300 mg. So the acceptable intake limit for NDEA, which is most potent in this case, is going to be 88 ppb. And for uh, total nitrosamine, then the limit for both NDMA and NDEA is going to be not more than 88 ppb. So this is the first option. Spec for individual nitrosamine is not applicable if you use the option number one. Now, how, what about the option number two? So option number two is again further divided into fixed approach and the flexible approach. Let us talk about the fixed approach where the total risk level calculated for all identified nitrosamines do not exceed one in one lakh. Now, this is called as the conservative approach which is mentioned into the ICH guideline M7 that is one in one lakh approach. The limit for each nitrosamine should be set as a percentage of the acceptable intake limit such that the sum of the percent acceptable intake limit for each specified nitrosamine does not exceed 100%. So there is a fixed limit for individual nitrosamine but there is no need of total uh, nitrosamine limit under this fixed approach. Let us take the example of uh, a product containing NDMA and NDEA having the maximum daily dose of 300 mg. Let us assume that uh, the ratio of 20% NDEA and 80% NDMA so total is going to become 20 plus 80 equal to 100%. So this is only as an example and you can take the different ratios as possible. So the acceptable intake limit for NDEA is going to be 88 ppb. Acceptable intake limit for NDMA according to its acceptable intake and product maximum daily dose 320 ppb. So what is the specification for NDEA under option number two which is a fixed approach we consider 20% of NDEA. So 20% of 88 ppb becomes 17.6 ppb. And similarly, the 80% of NDMA is going to become 256 ppb. So this way you can calculate the limit for individual nitrosamines by using the option to fixed approach. And as there is no need of setting the limit for total nitrosamine. The second approach, which is the flexible approach under the option number two. So in this case, the acceptable intake limit in PPM or PPB for each nitrosamine should be specified. Then the limit for total nitrosamine should also be specified which is not more than 100%. Then for each batch, the amount of each nitrosamine present should be converted into percentage of its acceptable intake. And this is the calculation formula to convert the uh, acceptable intake into the percentage of the acceptable intake for individual nitrosamine. <clears throat> Then the sum of percent acceptable intake limit of each specified nitrosamine should be calculated which shall not exceed 100%. I would like to you know, explain this particular situation with an example. Again the same example where NDEA and NDMA is present in a product having a maximum daily dose of 300 mg. Then calculate the acceptable intake limit for individual nitrosamines. And we learned how to calculate that, isn't it? So it is going to be 88 ppb for NDEA and 320 ppb for NDMA. Then calculate the sum of percent acceptable intake limit for each nitrosamine which shall not exceed 100%. Now this is going to be on to the batch specific observation. And this is the calculation formula one can use to calculate the total percentage of acceptable intake limit. Let us take a case number one where the 20 ppb of NDEA is observed and uh, 90 ppb of NDMA is observed. So how much is the 20 ppb in terms of its uh, percent acceptable intake limit? That is against 88 ppb it will become 22.7 percent and 90 ppb of NDMA becomes 28.1 percent. So 50.8 percent is the total acceptable intake limit present into the 
केस नंबर वन सो इट इज लेस देन वन हंड्रेड परसेंट एंड हेन्स द प्रोडक्ट मीट्स द एक्सेप्टेंस क्राइटेरिया अंडर द ऑप्शन टू अ फ्लेक्सिबल अप्रोच Now, in case of second example, where the 44 ppp of NDEA is observed, 160 ppp of NDMA is observed, and if you calculate the percent of acceptable intake individually, it becomes 50 percentage of NDEA and 50 percentage of NDMA. That exactly becomes 100 percent, still not crossing 100 percent, and hence it meets the acceptance criteria for option two under the flexible approach. In the third example, 100 ppp of NDEA is observed, 64 ppp of NDMA is observed. So once you convert this uh, into the percent, you will get 113.6 percent of NDEA and 20 percent of NDMA all together crossing 100 percent. So this is not meeting the acceptance criteria under option two flexible approach. Now how one can control the genotoxic? Uh, uh, how one can control the nitrosamines present into the genotoxic APIs? So there could be three different classifications of genotoxicity. One is mutagenic APIs. The first one is the mutagenic APIs and the substances having the DNA reactive properties as described under ICHM7. They are called as a mutagenic. The clastogenic, uh, the clastogenic APIs, substances causing structural chromosomal aberration. They are called as the clastogenic APIs or substances. And then the third one is uh, anogenic APIs, the substances causing numerical chromosomal changes. So, what is the approach? Uh, Consider to define the limit for nitrosamine for such a kind of genotoxic APIs. The first, in case if your API itself is a mutagenic, isn't it? In that case, nitrosamines can be treated and controlled under the ICH guideline Q3A or Q3B. Same is the ap approach applicable for the clastogenic APIs. You can also consider the approach given into the ICH guideline Q3 and Q3B to control the nitrosamines. And in case of uh, anogenic APIs. You cannot use Q3A, Q3B approach to control the nitrosamine, but you have to use the approach given into the EMAS guideline, Article Number Five Three, and the uh, nitrosamine present into the non-genotoxic API. Again, you have to uh, use the or you have to control the nitrosamine as explained in the Article Number Five Three. So I think you must have got an overview on controlling and setting the limit for nitrosamine present into drug substance and drug product as per the EMA. Thank you so much.